What's up, everybody? Are you tuning in to the Challenge USA on CBS? Well, tune in to me, Tyson Apostle, as I break down each and every episode with my co-host, Amelia Wedemeyer. I'm also a contestant on the show, which gives you all the insider scoop. Amelia, how stoked are you to do this? Tyson, I'm freaking excited. I cannot wait to sit my butt down every single week to watch the show, then come here and recap it with you on the Ringer Reality TV podcast. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other, well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. Today gave me a lot of clarity. Mm, Okay. And, you know, I, I, I looked at that today in my own life and, like, what my values align up with. And, you know, I do have my intentions fully for Rachel. Yeah. And I think you have the bubbly aspect to you, the the goofy aspect, and a little bit more like, I don't say rough around the edges, but y'all want people to be very direct with y'all. And so obviously I wanted to make sure that I express that to you. Yeah, totally. You're the mm-hmm. best. Oh, you are. Lo and behold, I've been freaking out all week that I'm not good enough to be The Bachelorette. Appreciate you. You do look great tonight. Thank you. And then Peyton tells me he feels his morals more align with Rachel and being called rough around the edges, like definitely hurts. That's my fear. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliet Littman. I'm here with Callie Curry. Hello, Callie. Hello, Juliet. Um, things really went off the rails this week on The Bachelorette. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, well, it's it started. I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so boring. And it took a very quick left. Oh my God, did it ever. It went from, I would argue, one of the like worst dates one could go on on The Bachelorette or The Bachelor to being so controversial that I'm really curious at what the response to this show is going to be. Like, I, I really look forward to the discourse, which I very infrequently say about The Bachelorette. Um, obviously, we're going to get to how... Gabby was rejected several times on the group date. And then Rachel was rejected several times. The rose ceremony, all the questions about having two bachelorettes, all of that. I swear we're going to get to it. But I also found everything that happened before that incredibly uh, troubling and bizarre, some combination, just a lot of weird shit happened in this episode. But Callie, I was texting you. And then you watched shortly after me and you stopped texting me when it got really controversial. (laughs) Like, did you get too into it or like, what was like, what was your reaction? Um, no, I think what was happening was I started it at a very bad time. I started it when I have both my kids, they don't have camp or anything. And I got to like, right when it started to get good. And that was like, right when my kids were like wanting to do stuff. And I, when it got good, I wanted to finish it. Yeah. (laughs) So I was trying to like occupy them and finish the episode because I couldn't wait for them to like take a nap to finish it. So I was, I was doing too much and, but I wanted to get through it. I, I mean, there's, there's a lot, there's so many things that happened that I was like, what? So I'm just, I'm just not sure. I don't know if ABC 
really thought this through I, before I making them both back threats. We don't know for sure, but I think based on the evidence we have from the show, we can definitively say they did not think this through because no. <laughs> there doesn't they, seem to be good rules in place. There's no good rules. And they both were like really hurt by tonight's episode and like what went down. No one's particularly happy. And there's just not that many guys. Like the pool from which they're picking is pretty small already. Like Gabby said she has nine guys and um, Rachel has Rachel even has fewer. Six. Yeah, she has six. And then we're, we have like many like, weeks like to go. Hometowns are, hometowns are like next week for Rachel. Yeah, like it's kind, it's kind of crazy. I really hope they're planning to bring in more guys. I don't think they're going to though. I don't also, know. Also, based off a of preview, Logan wants to switch over. So that means Rachel has five, five guys. I know. And one of them is Hayden, who I despise. Like she... Okay, you know, I don't even think she likes him. I think no, she just needed someone needed to say someone yes. Else. Yeah. She had she couldn't end on a no. So she had to p- give Hayden a rose. But he's awful. There's no way she's picking him. She's like, loves Gabby. It was he, either... It was either Hayden or Fabio. Yeah. Or Tremaine. Or Tremaine. Oh, no. Because he said no to her already. Yeah. I, for, I can't believe... I just can't believe these fuckers who said no to Rachel. It's it's but also though, if I were Gabby, like, and maybe I'm a little biased with Tremaine because I know someone who knows him, but like the way he did it, I was totally fine with. He seemed very respectful. By the way, I don't think I think for the most part, the people that did it at the rose ceremony were pretty respect respectful. They were put in um, the position, they were put in that position. They didn't choose it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they could have been based off what we saw earlier in the episode rude and assholes and just been like, I just don't see it with you. Like everyone was just like, I'm so sorry. By the way, for Tremaine to do it, he was the first one to do it. That has to be like, I'm sure he was really nervous. He didn't even like really know what the rules were because it was just thrown on them like 10 minutes beforehand. And I appreciate him being like, I don't really want to waste your time. Like there's two of you. And I already know that I'm, I'm, I want to get to know her more. Yeah. I thought I'm Gabby. I'm like, I maybe out of the group there left, like there's there's three guys. I probably would have chosen one of them because I'm like, okay, one of these guys really wants to get to know me, and I haven't really given them a chance yet. Right. Although we don't know, I don't think oh, only one guy turned down Gabby at the rose ceremony, right? No one did. Oh, I thought there was one for some reason. Um, Mm-mm, all of them said yes. Uh, you're right. You're right. Because then she, I think she didn't have another rose to get. Like I think they each had a maximum of nine. Yeah, and, like, they had and. By the way, I don't get the I'm taking a rose away from you now. I mean, I I don't either. So let's talk about that. So we love Jesse. Everyone loves Jesse. Yeah. The guys really love Jesse. Whenever he comes in, they're like, Jesse, my man. (laughs) It's super weird. So Jesse comes in to clarify after Rachel is turned down the first time that because she has given this rose, offered the rose and it's been rejected, she doesn't get it back. And do you think that Gabby and Rachel were aware of that stipulation before Jesse came out to quote, clarify? I don't think that Jesse knew. I don't think that the guys knew. I don't think that Gabby and Rachel knew. I think a producer just busted into Jesse's ear and Jesse was like, oh, okay. And went out there and took the rose. Like, this is just so unorganized. They should have had these rules from like day. I get like the, the first day they get to know them, whatever. After episode one, they should have made these rules very clear. So then yes. the guy yeah. had a whole, the guy should have had a whole episode to try to like multiple dates, but like the one-on-one dates, the group dates to figure out which one they wanted. Mm-hmm. And then Gabby and Rachel can choose, but at least the guys have a heads up. So like during that day date, Tremaine could have gone up to Gabby and been like, my intention is to get to know you. He never even had the opportunity to do that. Right. And I don't know why we keep using Tremaine. There's two other guys, but he was just memorable because he was the first guy I think because he seemed like worth keeping around. We didn't know. We don't know much about him. Meatball, you know, we're we're anti-meatball. So obviously he can go. (laughs) But, and then um, Alec, I mean, I have no no information on him. So like, who cares? Tremaine seemed like the most interesting. Um, and normal. And normal. What I think should have happened is clearly at the beginning of the episode, they are both feeling like um, nervous about them competing for the same guys, which like we all <laughs> knew was going to be an issue. And like the way they talked about it in their sit down on the balcony and they're like, we're really going to find out who's here for whom this week. 
as soon as that started happening, like they started feeling that way, I feel like they should have, the producer should have intervened and been like, okay, let's have a, a sit down with you guys and Jesse and you talk through what we, how this should proceed. Like instead of waiting mm-hmm. until week three, it should have been less last week before like any of the dates when they were like, okay, let's divide up the guys or just, you know, more of like a, let's set some ground rules because everyone's confused them, us. And, you know, it, again, it brings up like, why was Rachel just able to send home Jordan B? Like, should she have, like, <laughs> should, should she have unilateral power to do that? Like, you know, if she was able to do that, then why didn't Gabby just fucking send home Hayden Hayden, on, the, on yeah. the group date when he said she was rough around the edges. Fuck that guy. I hate him. <laughs> it's so real. Okay. So I had Hayden. Remember when we were like, we're our favorites. Hayden was one of mine because he was Southern, blah, blah, blah. Ugh. Rough around the edges is just not what you say. No, especially I, I thought there was like, it was funny for him to say that when she was like so perfectly put together and he's also seen her be like very poised and and, you know, like styled and glammed up when it's like, what is he really trying to say? Like, what do you think that was a euphemism for with him? I mean, the values thing was ridiculous, but like insult, basically it's like kind of like calling her slutty in a way or something or like, yeah, I I don't know. That's what I got out of it. I'm like, I think he thinks she's like, not like little miss Christian. And so it won't work. I guess. Yeah. But like, what does he know Very about weird. Rachel that he doesn't know about Gabby? But yeah, I just, I fucking hate that guy. And it was completely, I just feel like Gabby should have been able to send him home on the spot, but it just sucks. I thought Gabby said something really interesting at the end when, you know, when they go backstage for, to talk to the producers before they can conclude the rose ceremony, when Rachel's like, this was really public. Like I've been humi- humiliated yeah. publicly. It's kind of like they forgot that the TV show is going to be televised because she was saying what happened to Gabby wasn't as bad. Um, and it's like she forgot that we're going to be able to see all of it. <laughs> so I guess yeah, what but she meant was in front of the other different. guys. Yeah, yeah. Like it would not feel good to multiple people say no to me in front of the other people that I'm trying to like impress. Mary. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I, like it's hard for a guy and maybe this is a generalization, but like, like maybe for everyone, actually, like if there was like a really, if you had to choose between like two different tops and there was a line for one of the tops and the other top, no one was in, in that line. You would probably be like, Oh, what's wrong with that top? Are we talking about shirts here? Like clothes? Yeah. I don't know. I've talked about that. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Like we're at a store and there's one thing that there's a huge line for it sold out. You want it. And there's like the other one that no one wants it. There's so many of them. No one's in a line for it. You like automatically are like, yeah, it's, it's like when there's two restaurants right next to each other and one is empty and one is really crowded. You want to go to the crowded one. For sure. Yeah. That happened to me over the weekend. And in fact, I went to the empty one cause I could go inside and there was air conditioning and it was very good. Anyway, I I understand what you're saying. I just feel like they they both have just been put in this position to look look bad. And like it's just so it's so fucked up that the bachelorette is like the opportunity for like the woman to have the power and as Rachel noted multiple times in the episode the guys have had all the power this season even though really they should have a lot more. And I'm just curious like how angry were you when you were watching? Like do you do you feel like this is something to get like really or not whether not like a value judgment you should or you shouldn't, but like, did you get angry watching or were you just like this TV show? It's so dumb. Angry. I did not get angry at all. No, I was more so like, Oh, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. It, it does suck. I mean, because, I, by the way, I don't think it's it. Like it sucks for Rachel and Gabby, right? They like, were so excited to be bachelorette. Like, the way it goes for literally every single other person that's been on the show is much different than how it's gone for them. So they probably were expecting one thing and obviously they're not getting that. But then also for the guys, they're like, well, you, not you, not Gabby and Rachel, but like ABC, y'all put us in a situation. Do you not want us to choose? Yeah, right. And no, everyone, like everyone's put in a position to fuck up and make each other feel bad. But I, when I was watching, I, I, 
I was thinking about it more afterwards. When I was watching, I was like, oh my God, this is completely haywire. And just this episode has gone from zero to 100 real quick. Um, Mm -hmm. And then when I was thinking about it after, I was like, I guess it is like pretty deeply fucked up that these women just don't get the opportunity to really feel good, essentially, like after they were put in a shitty position by Clayton. And I think what's the saddest part of it is hearing them both question like if they deserve their value. love. Yeah, question mm-hmm. their value and like if they deserve to be bachelorette. And that's ultimately the piece that sucks. And I think the like the having someone else be a part of this experience um clearly has like undermined both of their confidence, you know, of like what's why isn't it just me? Even if they haven't said it. And that's that's honestly been kind of hard to watch. Yeah, no, I agree. But on the other hand, I do think there's a way this could have worked because I still firmly think their friendship is really sweet. I think their friendship is really sweet. And I enjoy watching it. So for me as a viewer, what I would have liked is that they were just going through it in parallel instead of together. Where it's basically like for the show, that's like basically... Uh, yeah, yeah. Basically, it's impossible for the show, right? Like you need to double everything. Like well, that's two essentially crews. what they're trying to do now. Yeah. And I, and I bet that's why they're going on the cruise because it's like only one location instead of having to double everything, essentially. I think that it's the right move. I think they should have done it like two episodes ago. Yeah. After the first night, they should have had double the guys. They should have had 40 guys or or more. And then they should have had two pile, two piles. And like, even if they're doing like this, (laughs) two piles, two piles piles of clothes, (laughs) <laughs> you know two two groups and then even if they're like doing the same group dates at first like they're just not they're never competing they're just like experiencing it in tandem that would have been the way to do it yeah uh, I think that like they have it right from now on they just should have done it earlier but also I was looking at the group of guys and I was just like even though Rachel has six I think she has like Six better guys. These guys also, it must be said, they pretty much suck. Other than Nate, there's really no one to write home about. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, who is Gabby choosing out of this group? Other than Nate, it has to be Nate. Okay, well, here's her list. Gabby... Well, ha- I think Nate... Go ahead. She has Nate, who we love. Johnny, who got her group rose date like kind of by default last week. Spencer, who I'm kind of curious about, we've gotten no information about him. He just seems like fairly normal. Jason, aka Michael Buble, who seems like so nervous all the time. He doesn't speak normally. Mario, who we're out on. Kirk, who's from Friday Night Lights and like isn't a, isn't a real choice for me. Quincy, who seems um, like a good talker, but that's it. And Michael, who I don't even know who that is. Who's Michael? Yeah, I don't know who Michael. <laughs> I don't know. I just made a face like, what? When you said Michael. Um, I do think that Buble has potential because I think to me, I like that he's not super comfortable with the cameras. Yes, he's. I, I agree that he seems like he could be charming. Um, he also handled his conversation pretty well with Rachel last week when he said he wasn't interested in her. Yeah, yeah, um, very normal. Yes, he seems normal. I think he's cute. He's an investment banker in LA, so I have to assume he's like got some money too. That's nice for Gabby, you know. Get get that green if you can with with the love. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, and then Rachel has Tino, who got her first impression rose. Love Tino, Logan, who um, we know is going to switch sides. And I've changed my mind on Logan, by the way. From what to what? I don't think he's a villain anymore. I just think he's full of shit. I don't trust Logan. Okay, so Eric and Logan, we thought were villains. Mm -hmm. Episode one. I don't know. The conversation they had made me feel different. Not not Eric, not, not Eric and Gabby. I'm talking about when Eric and Logan had that conversation about how hard it would be for Gabby. Yeah. If someone were to say that they weren't interested in her. And they just seemed like pretty normal, genuine. Like there wasn't any like evilness to it, which usually the editors wouldn't have. Like they purposely leave that kind of yeah. like human touch out. If that's it's true. What it was. It's true. It was like a normal person's conversation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's come back to all that in a little bit. Though. Okay. Here's, here's, here's Rachel's list. Logan. Logan. I forgot Avon and she also has Avon and Zach. Um, and... Avon and Zach, she gave them dates earlier in the episode. Love Avon. He's great. 
Uh, and then she's got Tino, Logan, Tyler. I don't really know who Tyler is either. Ethan, Jordan, and Hayden. She's just got all of these. Uh, outside of Ava and Zach, Tino and Logan, the other ones just have no chance. Okay, but then what about Gabby? Gabby yeah. has Nate and Jason. And maybe Eric. <laughs> and maybe Eric. <laughs> these guys suck. That's part of the problem. <laughs> this is like not a good group. I don't I Something just yeah, went very uh, wrong here. I guess trying to cast for two women was like too hard for them. But like... Probably hard because they have different types. Yeah. But um, like, I don't know. But like who was... Oh, Michelle. Michelle had a really good group of guys. Katie had like an all-time all-star cast. Yes. Of guys. She did. God... I'd love some Andrew S in this situation. I would, you know, can, a lot of Katie's guys, can they bring them back? I feel like Justin, Greg, happy with that. Andrew, Mikey, that Trey, that whole click. Let's just bring Great. them back. We need some, we need to spice it up a little bit. I'm assuming they're all on Paradise. Paradise. Yeah. I don't know. I've had, I've had no spoilers. I have to say, I find, except for the twins, I know they go to Paradise. Uh, I have to say, I find Tino really cute. So, like, if I'm choosing s- exclusively on looks, I think I'm choosing Tino. If I'm choosing on personality, I think I'm choosing Avon out of this whole crew. Out and, of Rachel's guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Nate's obviously number one of all. <sighs> yeah. Nate, Avon. Tino just seems normal. Like, I like, think I think Nate and Avon are, like, tier one Mm -hmm. and then tier two right now i have tino and i don't know which one i like more out of eric and logan but one of them probably now Er eric and logan i'm still suspicious of them both i I won't give it i'm gonna go with logan i like logan more than eric i think i'm still a little suspicious of eric i like logan yeah even though i know they're gonna make a big deal about him taking sides but like i the heart wants I don't know what the heart how, wants. I mean, what do you yeah, do? I don't know how they like the, it was going to happen. I know. This is this is yeah, it's especially for someone who has had conversations with both. Yeah. Seriously. Like even Logan, I mean, Eric, like even Eric has had conversations with both and he's kind of just like, "All right, well, I like Abby, <laughs> so she chose me." Which is probably what Logan was thinking. Yeah. It doesn't mean he would have said no to the opposite. He's just like, yeah, I like both of them. I don't know which one I like more because I've had conversations with both. They should have shut down those conversations after the first one and had them choose. And then they wouldn't have so much conflict. Right. And they wouldn't have this problem. Oh my God. They just handle it wrong. Well, let's go back to the beginning of the episode. We jumped over so much because a lot, <laughs> a lot happened, but I still have a lot of other things I want to talk about. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. First date of the night, Rachel and Zach. For, first of all, sorry, before that even, I noticed this. Usually the episode begins with the lead talking to the camera about like what's in store this week. And sometimes mm-hmm. if it's a guy, there's like some shower scenes or whatever. This episode opened up with the guys talking about what's happening. And um, I wasn't sure if they did that because they wanted to give Rachel and Gabby equal time. So they couldn't choose just one of them to show up front. But I thought that was pretty weird. It was just like, from the very beginning, the episode had a different feel to it as a result of that. I thought it was weird. Yeah. Um, and I didn't then, notice that to me. To be to be fair, I did not own. <laughs> I did not notice that. <laughs> Thank you so much for your honesty, British Cali. <laughs> Love Island <laughs> Cali. Um, first date of the night, Zach and Rachel. Ugh. They go to the SLS hotel, <gasps> which is barely in Beverly Hills, but fine. I think it's like technically is. It's on La Cienega. I've never been there, but it used to be like a cool place to have lunch. I think. Um, Callie says no. She's making a face. No, no, no. I mean, like a while ago. Yeah, like ten years ago, fifteen years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, they meet- I don't know if you heard me, but I was just snoring. You were snoring because it was so boring. It was like so boring. Top five worst or not worst. It was a great date. It was just no it was too normal. It was not a great nothing, date. It was not a great date. Happened. Okay, but if you're Rachel, you leave it and you're like, oh, that was. A fine date. She fine. seemed she seemed fine. happy with it. She seems, you know, Ernest Rachel seemed earnestly happy, but they do some clothes trying on with Karamo from Queer Eye. But for me, he'll always be from the real world, Philadelphia. Did you watch that? <laughs> I did. I used to live around the corner from their house. Oh. That used to be a bank, but they turned into a house and now it's an office space. Oh, that's hilarious. That's a real classic season. MJ, 
Landon, it is. Willie it is. from Ghost Rider, Car- yeah. Caramo. It was a great one. I don't remember any of the women. I'm so sexist. Um, <laughs> and, anyway, they do some like clothes trying on, like. I don't, I don't know, like to pick because they're they're allegedly going to a premiere, a movie premiere. Fake premiere. We're gonna come back to that. Um, <laughs> I have to say, as the episode progressed, I felt that Gabby's, excuse me, I felt that Rachel's clothes really improved, and they're starting to figure it out a little bit, mm-hmm. putting her in things she's more comfortable in. You texted me this, and it improved for sure, but like. It's like if you were at a, it's like an improvement that's like, yeah, it still sucks. Okay. Well, progress is incremental, Callie. So I'm going to take it. I'm just glad, you know, I think they're putting her in clothes that she actually does want to wear. I got, I've gotten a lot of DMs about it because I've talked about it so much. So, someone I've pointed out DMs and TikToks and like everything where we are not the only ones that are noticing yeah. this horrible styling. It's outrageous. But I, I, someone made a really good point, which is they think, Someone posited that perhaps Rachel didn't want to show a lot of cleavage. And so they don't know how to dress her as like to be like, quote unquote, hot. If it doesn't. Modest. Include, yeah. Or just yeah, like. That's interesting. We have not seen her cleavage. No. And I don't think we did last season either. And you know what? Shout out to her. I mean, if that if that's not something she wants to do. Good for you. Like dress however you want. Yeah. yeah. I get just it. Next, next to Gabby. So much cleavage. We're like close to her areola. It's <laughs> a huge difference <laughs> i know and it's just so different for reality tv not just the bachelorette and the bachelor like uh, you know if you only interacted with humans through bravo and like love island and the bachelor you would think that like women were like it was illegal for them to have a fully covered chest like you just so much boobs all the time <laughs> so a lot a lot a lot of cleavage a lot of fake boobs it is kind of hard to dress like hot if you don't want to show off your boobs i have pretty big boobs and it's hard to find like what you're comfortable with so mm-hmm. if you have if you have big boobs it is harder yeah yeah it's harder uh, well yeah if you don't show off your boobs because also big boobs make you just look big so if you're not showing them off then it just makes you look like kind of frumpy um, also I was going to say, she can't do this. Gabby can do this. She can't do this, but if she was taller than you can, you can wear something that covers your boobs and just make short shorts. And then you have like your or short dress, whatever. And you have long legs. So it looks still like sexy, but like Rachel can't do that. So yeah. Or maybe, yeah, she just clearly, it's just like very rare to find someone who's better at dressing themselves as a contestant on the bachelor than with the stylist on the bachelorette. <laughs> so <laughs> Because again, this is not on her, and I do feel bad. That we've been so so attuned to her body, but she's hot, and I just want her to be comfortable. But yeah. I also want her to to get a better deal, whatever. Yeah, but but then I I don't think we talked about this last week because I think we this for some reason the last seven days seemed like a really long time. But anyways, um, there was that article that came out that said that she was going for Mother of the Bride. Yes, which also is a very odd choice, and I can see the stylist Being going confused. for that. In that, yeah. in what she's worn so far. <laughs> yeah. So agreed. So anyway, they try on some clothes. They end up with like some fine outfits. I don't know. She wears this um, like feathery like shawl over a sequin dress. That was kind of a mess. But I was like, maybe it was cold. Does it get cold in the evening and in, in March and April in LA? I I don't know. And so I was they, they were going for like fifties movie premiere. Yeah, like old glamour, yeah. Hollywood, old glamour. Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. It's such a cliche. It's it's time it's time to retire that one. Um. So they said they were going to a movie premiere. This is ABC. So I assumed they were going to like a Disney movie premiere or something like that. And I was like, oh, I wonder what movie's coming out next week from Disney that they're going to be attending the premiere of or something like that or a screening. But no, they go to like some downtown LA old theater that's not currently in use. There's a step and repeat that's just for the two of them. It's like fake, a fake movie title called Me and You. And then they get into the theater and they just play these slideshows of of videos and photos of them from when they were kids with messages from their families. And it's like literally the worst date one could have on this television show. What a fucking letdown. That was like the cheap, like I could, I could cover a cost of a date that cost more than that. Like that's insane. Also, I was thinking like when they saw me and you, Rachel was like, 
me and you. And I was just like, oh, is it a movie? An I know. actual movie? Because when I, I saw her, I was like, I wonder what it's going to be because it obviously has to do with them. And then her reaction made me like backtrack. And I was like, oh, maybe it is a movie. Then we go inside and I was like, no, it's not a movie. And... Uh, and they they uh, they weren't even at like the Alamo Draft House. So when they put like food for them in between the seats, it was cramped. Go to a nicer movie theater if it's not actually going to be. Like, a... Go to IPIC. There's yeah. one right in Westwood. Yeah. I I also don't like. I, I think I texted you this because we were still texting during this boring part, and <laughs> I was just like, "This isn't like five or not five months. This isn't like eight weeks into this where they miss their families." Like this is episode four, right? Yeah, it was. Yes, or no? This is three. Three this is the week, episode, episode three. Okay, so this is episode three. They saw their families last week. Yes. Let's relax. <laughs> what are we doing? I know. I know. I just feel like you know Zach kept saying in his interviews, "I just never expected this," and I was like, "What he means is he never expected such a shitty date." <laughs> yeah, he was expecting to be in a helicopter. Yeah, like something actually good. It was so, so, so bad. <laughs> oh my God. I, I think I was racking my brain. I can't think of a worse date outside of um the seasons that were... I was going to say... During the we've, pandemic. We've, we've had a lot of bad dates the past year, two years. Kate, yeah. So Katie, Matt, and Tasha slash Claire, like that's kind of an exception because they couldn't leave the grounds or wherever they were. But I don't know. Even the date where like Tasha and Ivan had, where they basically had room service and like jumped around in the hotel room, I would prefer that to this bullshit date. I would be like, oh, the seats aren't. Com- I guarantee those seats aren't comfortable. They're in like tight clothes. Like I would just be also, like, how long were they there? Like they're filming. They probably were in that movie theater for at least two to three hours. And then I was thinking about when they got out of the car and they were like, oh, like Rachel, Zach. <laughs> I was like, is this like fake? Like they, they, there was no real audio. No. Like, and then they had like five people like taking pictures and it was so bizarre. Like if I'm a grown up, like if you're 12, this is a great freaking date. They would love the cameras pretending that it's a movie premiere or whatever. These are 30 year olds like pretending to be shot by paparazzi and going on a step and repeat and then watching movies from family members they saw a week ago it's so weird <laughs> also that just reminds me um have you seen 13 going on 30 it's like a 13 year old is that mandy moore no it's jennifer garner and mark ruffalo when she like mm-hmm. time travels it's like a 13 year old's yeah it's like a 13 year old's <laughs> idea of what a cool adult date would be it's not actually yeah. an adult's idea of a date and so just so bad and then we forgot to mention there's a fucking piano player there. And at the end, they like <laughs> yeah. get up and dance to his instrumental music. I mean, just <laughs> so awkward. But in general, like Zach's like a nice guy. Sure. He's totally plain. Like, yeah. nothing but to write home about. Does that not seem like Rachel's type? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Like she cried rivers over Clayton. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> poor Rachel yes she likes someone who's like I, I you know she's just really like earnest as I keep saying and I think he seems to fit the bill so I don't know she they have this really sweet she liked it I hated it I can't believe this is how they spent their time and money on this the show but whatever um I, think, I, I thought it was weird and boring but I was fine I was blown away by how pathetic I thought it was I was just like holy shit I can't believe this is what the bachelorette is doing people always like like wonder and speculate about if the bachelorette has less money like for production than the bachelor and this is why because it's shitty days like this yeah I remember Matt's hotel versus Katie's yeah Katie's yeah yeah <laughs> and also versus I mean the La Quinta is nice but it's so hot I mean it must have not been that expensive I mean Matt's July. hotel was just so pretty and big Huge, and there were yeah. so many different areas yeah seemed like they had much more to work with for Matt This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 
24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements. So many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Meanwhile... While Gabby is, has the day by herself because Rachel's out and about, she goes over to the mansion to, to see the guys, to visit them. And she was nervous. And not a one pulls her aside for an individual conversation. And they like, a few of them play football. She tries to play with them. Mostly they just watch, like everyone watches like a couple guys play football. And this was my worst nightmares. I really felt for Gabby in this situation. I did it. Why not? Interesting. <laughs> I just, maybe I, okay. First of all, let's just say you would enjoy playing football. You would enjoy the activity. Okay, okay, sure. I would have been fine t- playing football, like trying to intercept whatever. So that's one. But I was just thinking, how many times has this happened? Like in the past three years, I feel like the bachelorette has gone to the house. And then like, remember Katie was like, if you're not going to pay me attention, blah, 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 blah. Like, I think that I was think on this- a date though. That was on a date. No, and then correctly. Michelle had the same thing where she was like, these guys aren't paying attention to me. You're right. I'm just, I, I, for some reason, I think it's like some weird thing that when they come to the house, the guys are like, oh, we're, we're off. Like we're on our break right now. Yeah. They're like, we don't, we, we don't, we don't know what to do. Because but- the difference in how they act when they're at a cocktail party, like they're all like clamoring, trying to get her. But it is weird. Cause like they thought that they were be chilling so like none of them are prepared and i feel like their mindset is very like no we're we're on break like we haven't checked back in yet okay like, clocked back in <laughs> you're like you're like pay me to talk to gabby um yeah i feel like that's how they act because when the, ever this happens all the guys are like i was sitting on the couch i'm probably not going to get up so that's a fair point that's an interesting theory but my counterpoint to that is well first two things Logistically, on the dates, I'm sure they have producers like prodding them to do things. Like producers being like, "Oh, yeah. like, are, have you gotten your time with her yet?" Or like, yeah. what are you thinking? When are you going to pull her aside? So that's probably not happening in this more casual setting. But even with that said, shouldn't you take any opportunity to like get to know her or like you know or like flirt yeah. with her? I I would just be like, if you aren't interested in flirting with me, I would be offended. Like I would yeah. I would feel rejected for sure. But it's also weird. You're with. 10 other her boyfriends and usually it's more like like split up so you know when you have time or when she's gotten to talk to someone not just like yeah just figure it out here you are here she is with 20 guys i guess but like just like, go talk if to one her the guys did pull her all the other guys would have been like ugh, there he goes right. and that would have been a storyline yeah and I, I that's true but Okay, let's take a storyline. I don't. I, I feel yeah, like yeah. that would be fine. That's the point of the show. I would. I would just definitely feel like she did. And also, this is this is triggering for me because I remember all the times in college where the boys are just playing fucking video games <laughs> and wouldn't put the controllers down. It just feels the same way. Yeah, I grew up around boys, so very used to like being invisible in a room full of video games. Then you know, just do your own thing. This is a this is a different situation because she's like trying to date them all. I feel for how she felt. I wasn't like, I guess 
I was just kind of like, I don't feel bad for you because you've seen this happen so many times, but I do feel bad for the way she felt. I just, I don't think I felt bad for the situation where I probably mm-hmm. felt bad two seasons ago. And now it's just happened too many times. So I'm like, the producers know what they're doing. They're trying to make her feel bad. That's not cool. Yeah. The destabilizing of Gabby this episode and then Rachel subsequently was was really upsetting. Like Gabby was really, you know, this this sent her into pretty big a moment of self doubt. Yeah, she's yeah. crying. But the first it starts with the conversation with Eric, which I'm sure we're just about to get to. This but, is no. This was before Eric. This was while Rachel. Oh, we this was first. Then, yeah. then the conversation with Eric, which yeah. had nothing to do with Eric. It was just the kind of conversation that they were having. So that's like top of her mind. Then they go on this group date. Like, I think anyone would have been like, wait, should I be here? On top of both her and Rachel probably thinking this entire season, like I wasn't good enough to be the only one. Right, right. Yeah, I think Gabby obviously has a lot that she's working through and like the relationship with her mom. I mean, obviously the feelings of, the feeling of being unloved or uncared for is really acute for her because she talks about how like no one can understand what it's like to not be loved by your mother. And I mean, honestly... I don't know what I would do without my mom. So, you know, I (laughs) can't even imagine what that is like for her. And it's really, really sad. But seeing her become totally destabilized is has has been like just really sad. And, you know, it's a testament to to what's wrong with television in this show in particular. But let's talk about the day with Eric. So she has a one on one with Eric. They they do a sound bath with her grandfather. And while we all love her grandfather and it was really funny when he just went to sleep during the sound bath, that sucks. Like for a a one-on-one to have your grandfather there, like Eric clearly wasn't into it. Like at the end, he was like, yeah, let's try to get away from whatever's happening over there with her grandfather and the random, allegedly random woman. And like that, I just think that also really sucks. I think it would have been better if it were like Nate on the second date. Like I've I've got someone on one time with you. Like, let me meet your grandpa now. As your first one-on-one date, it's weird. I do love her grandpa. I think he's funny. He's a lot like Gabby, actually, both doing bets in in his words, not my words. Um, But yeah, it was, it was weird. Also even, yeah, it was just, it was all weird. Also, I feel like they played the grandfather card too early. I mean, we all love Gabby's grandfather, but don't you want him to come in when it's like she's serious about someone? Well, there's only nine guys left, so... <laughs> That's true. I guess they knew it might be hard to bring him in at another time, but... Rachel's were... parents will be on next episode. <laughs> yeah, her her dad. Also, um, how are they going to handle that? Does she get to, like... How, do, how are her eliminations going to... I don't... I don't know. They're they're making up as they go along. How can we possibly know? Um, so they they have the bowling date. I think a bowling date is actually fun. I would like to have a a date on the Bachelor that's like a semi normal activity, so that you like have a basis of how you should act. <laughs> um, and they like they were comparing it to being teenagers like out on a night or night out or whatever. I thought that was actually cute. And then they have a dinner. Um, and Gabby gets emotional talking about uh, her relationship with her mom and just how she has a lot to work through in general uh, with relationships. And she gets really upset. Um, she fears that uh, because of her past relationship, she's not lovable. A lot of kind of like classic Bachelor stuff with the addition of um, the strange estrangement with her mom. And I just think that was like very... It's very intense and not something you like really see on television that much. Yeah. Uh, Uh, It's weird because it's obviously, I guess, equal, like a mom's love and a dad's love. But I feel like you've heard someone not having their dad before, right? Like from guys and girls. The fact that she like, that her mom just like wasn't chose not to be in the picture, I feel like is not something that we're that we see as often even if it, I, I i honestly don't even think it happens as often like in in real world situations but i know it does happen um and for her to just i don't know for her to like put it in words is just so sad yeah i know it's just so so visceral for her and i actually think i mean i'm not a parent but you know i have parents i do think a relationship with your mother it's just different than your relationship with your father. Also, there is some, there's an aspect to it that's biological. Um, um, are you talking about for women? 
or for yeah. men or both? For, for both, really. Yeah. But I was also saying, also thinking for a girl that's now yeah. a woman, that's even probably a different level of connection yeah. with your mom. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, I just can't imagine. So it was really sad. I felt like Eric wasn't that comforting, but maybe, I, I don't know what you're supposed to do in that situation. Also, you don't really know each other. So like, you don't know what kind of support she wants, but I just thought he was like, he could have been a little more effusive and, and proactive in making her feel better, but she seemed fine with it. Yeah. I, also, she gave the you, rose. You, you texted me this. Yes. And at the moment I was just like, it was fine. She was fine with it. So I agree with what you're saying right now. But looking back on it, like, do I think Nate would have been better in that situation? Probably. Yes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think Eric just seems like he didn't really know what to do. So he did like baseline niceness of like, oh, it's okay. Or like, oh. Yeah, I mean, also like. He just started making out with her first, pretty quickly. But <laughs> but also like first date. I know. They don't know. They don't know each other that well. I wouldn't know what to say either. It's just like, oh, fuck. I'm so sorry. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I I know. I want, I wanted Eric uh, at the moment. I was fine with it because Gabby was fine with it. But like, obviously I wanted Eric to be better, but he doesn't even know her well enough to be better. Sure. Yeah. But I just think he innately doesn't seem to have like that much emotional intelligence, but like, that's okay. Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. that's who we're dealing with that's why i'm suspicious of him but Never do you think the... he'd be better with like his girlfriend of a, a year probably he probably would know like they would ha- hopefully by that point have like a language yeah. together so he would know yeah. how to like, comfort her when she needs it but i can't be sure i don't know i just i'm not sure about eric i'm really not I, it's like, maybe it's his hair i just i don't know <laughs> something about the it does come across like a little oh you want to be on tv and also just like, you need to do more to prove to me that you're not just like a dick. So I don't know. Maybe I'm being unfair, but that's how I felt watching Eric. I'm, I'm not completely in on him. Um, let's move on to the group date, which is now with Bachelor regular Frank LaCosta. Franco, Franco LaCosta. He is the um, official Bachelor fake wedding shoot photographer. It's like becoming unbearable. I did not ever want this to be a permanent part of The Bachelor. Um, no, that was, um, about the time where my kids were starting to like act up and Seth was like, what are you doing? (laughs) And he started watching and Seth was just like, what is happening? (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, this is their date. And he's like, that's like weird. And he thought that the proposal part was like out of control and could not believe that that happened in front of all the guys. And I was like, you thought that was the worst part? Like, what about the car wash? What about Aiden having a baby? And he was like, yeah, I mean, that's weird. But the the proposal (laughs) is like crossing like boundaries. Aiden having the baby was definitely extremely strange. Yeah, having meatball. (laughs) And like pretending to be in labor. It was so weird. It very quickly became no longer a bridal shoot. It was just... Super bizarre. There was a bunch of the guys in like the Daisy Duke, Daisy Duke shorts. Um, Jacob Fabio was given the leaf to be Adam, as in Adam and Eve with Gabby. It was just like all the lowest hanging fruit of ridiculous photo shoots that you could do. And it was not remotely entertaining. And it wasn't even really funny. I think I like, I had to rewind a few times. So like I started tuning it out because I was like, this is really dumb. Um, and then, yeah, Nate does like an actual proposal from having spent had, had one date with Gabby. Honestly, that's the biggest red flag about Nate. Like the fact that he's like so into her already, but maybe yeah. he's playing the game, but that's yeah, a red flag I mean, to me. If you're supposed to, like if, if you got called up for that, are you going to be like, will you marry me? Like, no, you're supposed to like, you know, I think I would rely on some jokes a little bit more. I just think that I would like try to have yeah. fun with it and be funny because we've only had one date, but But also it is like a thing where he's like, well, this is my two minutes with Gabby this week. Who knows when I'll get another two minutes. It's true. It's true. Um, I I just like, when will we get rid of this man? I I just am so sick of him. So sick of Frank LaCosta. No, thank you. Also, I I will say I was like, Oh, Rachel's trying to look better. I thought she was wearing a good wedding dress. Actually. I thought she looked nice in it. That's when I was really happy with the improvement. Fully team Rachel. He doesn't get it. At all? No. When the guys were like saying no, he was like, what? Interesting. They're saying no to Rachel? 
what is it about her that they're so excited about? I mean, I like her too, but I'm just curious. Like, what does he say? He he thinks that she's really pretty compared to Gabby. Okay. Alrighty. Well, which is, which I'm like, yeah, the guys think differently. And he was like, I mean, okay, I don't get it, but all right. <laughs> I'm like, what? Maybe it's my, I'm like the personality. And he's like, mm, okay. <laughs> Gabby seems like way more fun, like just in like a one off. Like if you're having a date, I think Rachel's they're not, both not like fun. pretty. I think they're both pretty. Like I don't think there's like a huge gap in Me neither. pretty. I think they're both yeah. pretty. Uh, so I think it's interesting that other people are like, the other people that don't know them at all are like, oh yeah, obviously you're choosing Rachel. And I'm yeah, like, my, are we? My friend who I was watching the first episode with said the same thing. She was like, yeah, Rachel. And she was like, Gabby looks old because of like the work she's done to her face, which I thought was interesting. I don't even think she looks old. Me neither. But also, maybe we know her too much. We love her too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the after parties at SoFi Stadium, last seen as the site of the home Super Bowl where the Rams won. The guys act like they have reached Valhalla. They're so happy to be there. Um, we were talking about this too. My opinion is a football stadium is not actually a good place for a private event because it is too big. Like, it's just weird. Like, when I was in college, there used to be events at Soldier Field and it was like not cool. And you're just like, okay, so now what? We're just in a room overlooking a big field and there's nothing to do. Okay, great. Thanks for nothing. Like I just, it's not cool. I understand why SoFi Stadium would want it, but it's not actually a good place to have a date or a party. Uh, yeah, no. Also for like, maybe for 5,000 people. <laughs> sure. Yeah, for like not really, for 10. a really big event. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Um, Rachel is just having a great time. She and Avon just making out in the end zone. Seems like they're just, you know, getting after it. Rachel, she seemed drunk. Do you agree? She was just like making out a lot. And I support it, obviously. Uh, but I did not think that she was drunk, but I thought maybe drunk happy. Like she was just so happy. Everything was going well. Which, by the way, other times it hadn't gone that way for her. So she was probably just like, this is awesome. Or like finally getting to the part where like we all, we both have guys that like us and da 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 and she heard from Hayden I think that night that she was the one that he wanted to get to know Avon obviously is like all about Rachel so Rachel was on cloud nine I think she, she and Tino had a had a moment on the field as well I'm I'm just very physically into Tino he's definitely the one who I think is the cutest so I'm like yeah and Tino don't leave him out Callie <laughs> um, <laughs> and Tino um, meanwhile Meanwhile, Gabby gets told by three guys. First, Tyler, who handled it pretty well when he just said that he was, you know, had a better connection with Rachel. Then fucking Hayden goes with the she's rough around the edges. And then fucking Fabio is like, he doesn't know if he'd continue on the show if it was just her. And she loses it. Rightfully so. That's like fucked up. Fabio and well, Hayden. Why did yes. you put it in those terms? Like, can't you the just say way, it like nicer? The way that they put it, yeah, wasn't great. And then you layer that on top of the other things that had happened in the week, and I was like, I mean, you're like, yeah, she of course she's, she, she, yeah, she needs time to herself. I felt, I felt so bad for her. I was really appalled by Hayden. Hayden, the way that Hayden spoke to her, I think Jacob Fabio seems like an idiot. Like he doesn't know how to talk to women and is just like going for jokes and whatever. That's fine. He doesn't have the maturity yet. Hayden, I think, seems mean. Calling her rough around the edges and referring to like her her morals and her values is just like those it's just like low comments. You don't know her and you're lucky to be in this position. And I I just was like really pissed at him and I I like really hate him. He's the one that I hate the most on this season now. I don't I think that he yeah it's how they said it. Even Fabio being like what no I, I thought that was worse honestly. Really? Like if it was just you I would leave. No you wouldn't. Like you would you would have gotten to know me because that would have been your only option and you would have been on the bachelor and it would have been fine our bachelorette and it would have been fine. So that's one. That was like okay guy I'm not that bad of an option. This being rough around the Edges, I think his what he meant to say was different than what he said, but I would have been pissed to hear rough around the edges. I don't think that you should describe a woman that way. Just because she's different than what you want doesn't mean she's rough around the edges. It just means she's different than what I want. So yeah, all of that's bad. Um, but I don't think that Hayden is like, I don't know. I felt like 
he uh, I thought I found him like really smug and yeah, he's not my type of now. person. It Ugh. felt it felt kind of like I don't even know, like my opinion really matters a lot. And obviously we're not meant for each other, obviously. I think it seemed like um he was really like he thinks like Rachel's lucky that he's interested in her. Like, I just think he seems really full of himself and I don't know why. Like, what's so but good about you, man? Yeah. I don't know if I hate him, but you're convincing me right now. He sucks. He sucks. I'm glad. I love being right. Or at least love building consensus. Um, and then sort of like the biggest moment of this date is when Gabby doesn't give out the the rose. Are you surprised that she didn't pull Rachel aside before that to tell her what was going on? Uh, I'm not surprised because it's Gabby, but do I think she should have? Because also I'm like, Nate's there. You have guys there that you like. I know. Yeah. Maybe and Rachel could have, could have so talked Rachel to probably would have been like, wait, wait, what about this guy? What about this guy? Like you have guys that are here that are interested in you. That really sucks. And I'm sorry you feel that way. But that's what I thought she was going to do. I was going to be like, wow. Nate wasn't all bad. Right. That's what, that's what I thought she was going to do. And I agree. Maybe Rachel would have convinced her, but I, that's why some of this, like rhetoric doesn't make sense. And they're like, now our journeys are, you know, are separate. We're going on our own journeys. Well, it's like, you kind of were, you didn't see each other all night. Um, and I was just confused about like why no one had filled Rachel in. And I feel like they should have more regular check-ins. It's just, they needed more rules and they needed to know what they were doing a little bit more. And they clearly, clearly didn't. But I, I really like my favorite part of the season is watching Gabby and Rachel interact. So like when they did chat afterwards, I, um, I thought that was interesting and like touching. I don't know. I just like seeing them actually be friends. It's such a good yeah. A they di- are friends for sure. Such a different part of the show we've never seen before. And it's like actually pretty cool. I I really do enjoy that. So, um, yeah. And so then she didn't give out the rose. And then fast forward to the final rose ceremony, which we discussed. I just really needed a lot more from Jesse in this episode. I needed more explanation. I needed more. Here's I don't what think we're he gonna has do. It. I know, but like they're not putting Jesse in a position to succeed either. I don't yeah, like it. I'm not blaming Jesse because I don't think Jesse knows what's going on either. I think he's like flying by the seat of his pants. Like, I think they're all just, no one really knows what's going to happen. I'm looking forward to seeing what's next though. Like, I also just hope they both end up happier and I really want them to introduce some more guys. This cannot be it. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for the boat. The preview for next week looks great. So they're going to Paris. I mean, who doesn't yeah. love Paris? Great. France rules. And then the Logan switcheroo. Um, question. Okay. Week three. Who are you giving your rose to? Gabby or Rachel? You know, I think if I were a, one of these guys, despite we saw at the rose ceremony, I would choose Rachel. She just seemed to be having more fun this week. And I think I'm always going to gravitate towards the fun. But... Gabby has my heart. I'm like Logan. You know, I'm going through Rachel this week, but probably next week I'm going to want to go back to Gabby. What about you? Yeah. Um, I'm doing the same thing I did last week and I'm going for Gabby. I felt really bad for Rachel last week. I felt really bad for Gabby this week, even though obviously I still feel worse for Gabby, even though Rachel got more rejection at the end of it. I kind of forgot about that and I'm just giving it to Gabby. I want her to feel good about herself because you are valued, Gab. We love you here. We sure do. We party. We sure do. Um, thank you so much to Devin Manzi and Jade Whaley for producing this episode. I'll be back on Thursday with our colleague, Jody Walker. And Callie and I will be back next Monday. Have a great week. <laughs>